Okay, we're now recording. Please go ahead. Okay, hello everyone. Um, the meeting for today, which I believe is the 13th of June, um, is beginning now, and I'd like to call on the councillors in attendance to see if we have a quorum. Councillor Grisman? Present. Councillor Ryan? I'm present. Councillor Frecker? So we do have a quorum and we'll be able to have the interview for candidates to the finance committee. I would also like to check on each of you if you're able to hear us as well. Um, and I'm going to at least at this moment go by the screen and then afterwards I'll be able to explain what we hope to do or the procedure we'll have to take to get the interviews going. So on the screen, um, I see Bernie Kubiak. Can you hear me? Yes, present. Thank you. Tom Porter. Present. Rizwana Khan. Present. Present. Oh, am I? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Yeah, OK, OK. <laughs> and uh, Stephen Casey. Present. OK, thank you. What we decided to do with the interviews is that we would have each of the counselors take questions in turn. And so I intend to take the first question. Councillor Grisman will take the second question, Councillor Ryan the third, and then I'll take the fourth, Councillor Grisman the fifth, Councillor Ryan the sixth, I'll take the seventh, and then the final question will be by Councillor Grisman. And then how we're going to have the questions will be that for each question, all the candidates will answer. And the initial order is going to be from Tom Porter as number one. Then number two would be Benny Kubiak. Three would be Rizwana Khan. And then four would be Stephen Casey. And so for question two, Bernie would start answering Rizwana and then Stephen. Three would be Rizwana and we would go around so it isn't that each question is started by the same person. We are varying the order. I don't know if this makes sense to everyone. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll try to follow along. I <laughs> that works for us, thank you. And there wouldn't be any follow-up questions, so we're just going to go ahead with the questions as is. And for those counselors that are not present, they'll be able to watch, and um, from there we'll get to deliberate. We're not having any deliberation this evening. Okay, I'm going to pull up the questions now. Question number one, based on the selection guidance, what do you feel you bring to the finance committee that can make it successful? Please include any experience you have with finance in general or the town's finance committee. And that's for Tom Porter. Thank you. Um, I've got a great interest and commitment to see my hometown thrive in a sustainable way and I can offer some specific experience as a financial analyst, a controller, a chief financial officer, and a treasurer over 30 years experience in those financial roles. And I've served in those capacities for both for-profit and nonprofit companies, large and small, uh, a number of startups, as well as established businesses, and also for enterprises that were thriving, as well as uh, some who were struggling borrowing and even restructuring and reorganizing. So I've studied a lot of business plans and financial reports. For much of my career, I developed budgets. I presented cases for private investment. I held profit and loss responsibility personally, and I prepared entities for public offering. So I've done a great deal of financial analysis. And locally, I, I now uh, 
currently chair the finance committee of the Jewish community of Amherst. I'm presently the finance liaison on the board of Canvas, which is a national arts and culture grant making organization. Uh, for the past 15 years, I've worked in the in business and professional education, providing technical and ethical certification to professionals in the investment management and the financial planning fields. I don't have formal experience on the town council per se, but I've been playing, paying close attention for a number of years. I've been paying taxes uh, for many, many years in Amherst. Uh, and I've been reading the Gazette and the Bulletin, and before that, the uh, Amherst Journal and Record back to 1970. So I'm pretty familiar with town issues, very interested in, uh, in, in uh, contributing to help align the town on a path toward an ambitious, achievable, and sustainable future. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Benny Kubiak. Uh, good evening. Yeah, I've... Um... Been on the finance committee now, served one term on the finance committee, and it's my term that's vacant, although I'm interested in the one year appointment. I've got a detailed understanding of municipal finance, uh, municipal operations, and the related laws and regulations that come from uh, years of practice as a, a former uh, finance committee member under the town meeting form of government as a finance committee member in the town of Belchertown. It's a select board member in the town of Belchertown and the uh, administrator of, of three, three communities. So I've written dozens of municipal budgets and uh, uh, have lived and breathed this stuff for, for quite some time. Um, before that, I managed uh, contracts, human services contracts for the state. And that meant working with a variety of for-profit and not-for-profit uh, corporations, large and very small, sometimes one or two person small. Uh, so I've got a good sense of, of how all this goes and, and how it works. Um, in addition to my experience, I've got a master's in public policy from uh, uh, an administration from UMass, and that tends to, those familiar with that program know that it has a pretty hefty uh, economics component to it. Thank you. Rizwana? Yeah. Hi, I've been, uh, uh, I have done lots of community projects where I have seen uh, how the finance is, is affecting, and especially this is a small town, and I am also uh, very um, careful as to everybody get uh, diversity and uh, equity is very important because that's how the funding uh, um, gets opens up because wherever there is some kind of a shortfall as we have um, in, in our budget, I, I always find ways of getting them because I am in advocacy and I am able to connect to political and social organizations that uh, have funds and who are looking to support the uh, the under you know privileged underrepresented people over in the town, especially in where I live. I am I can see because I am an educator. I work in the uh, school system. I have very closely firsthand. I've seen uh, what is happening and. I personally, because of the fact I have been, um, you know, in a grassroots movement, I have uh, also, um, you know, a unique perspective to this finance community because my ability is to process. I am able to analyze and then uh, process vast amounts of data also because I have my background in um uh, you know, the, the spreadsheets and uh, also research and then data analysis. So that will help in that because uh, then it will be, uh, you know, uh, there'll be equity in there because of the fact a community where we are at is really suffering and there has been incidents also where they were not um, equitably given um, their funds and there are lots of funds out there and that is the reason i think we personally i think the budget should be opened up to the grants and other 
venues uh, where we can uh, get um, funding from. So we will, I always believe in pilot programs and also the fact that active in the, you know, looking for funds. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, Stephen. I believe you're muted. Oh, there we go. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't have the proper facilities. I actually uh, am stepping out of a, another meeting to, to join this. First of all, thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Um, so I worked in the finance division for the town of Amherst for four years. Um, and through that time, I think I had the opportunity to uh, build a lot of great relationships with awesome. the other like town employees um, and really develop a understanding of really all the, the work that goes into, um, you know, creating a, a budget into to gathering those funds and how they're dispersed. Um, as a resident of Amherst for the past 28 years, um, I have countless uh, relationships with different groups that are represented in, in Amherst. Um, a lot of that is, you know, through sports, through music, or just like socially. Um, I also turned during my time uh, working for the town, I got to, I was at Central Services. Um, and in that role, you just come into contact with, with so many people, not just like town residents, but like tourists and anyone that, that's come to talk, town hall for any business that they need to conduct there. And so that was a great opportunity to, you know, help help residents. Uh, and that's that's really what my goal is uh, in joining the, the finance committee to helping the, the people of Amherst and the town that I care so genuinely about. Um, I have a lot of energy uh, and commitment and drive. Uh, currently, I am working as a regional assessor um, for Conway, Waitley, soon to be Leverett and Sunderland. Um, and so I am very much involved in a town government, um, uh, kind of on a broader, broader scale. Uh, and I look forward to using everything that I'm kind of learning and my resources to that to benefit the, the town of Amherst. Thank you. You're welcome. Before we go to question two, I had skipped the time limit which actually is a maximum of three minutes. Um, I think we most of us fell under that, but I want to put that on the record that we have about three minutes for each question. question is, is George going to use the wave? The uh, Here we go. Oh, it's red tonight. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Um, first of all, welcome all of you and thank you for applying. What is your understanding of the role of the finance committee. And we're gonna start with Bernie. Okay, um, well, the finance committee is an advisory body to the uh, council as a whole. Uh, it's a subcommittee of the council. It's able to take a deep dive, if you will, into any proposal that makes recommendations as to budgeting or spending. Uh, can take the time to do that and um, make recommendations back to the council as to what actions should be taken or may be taken. Uh, it It is a recommendation. It, it's a body that provides recommendations, not mandates. Um, and that's a constraint, but it's an interesting one because it gives you plenty of opportunity to get involved and, and have a discussion. And hopefully... Um, take both a, an immediate and long range perspective, what's happening in the town. And uh, if we're successful as a finance committee, then our recommendations to the council will be clear, concise and actionable and can help the council make much better decisions. Thank you. Um, Rizwana. Yes. Yes, uh, the role of the finance committee, I believe the committee is essential in overseeing the financial health of, of and sustainability of the town. And that is very important. And uh, 
because uh, presently uh, we have some challenges in budget reviewing and recommendations. So I uh, believe that the role will be more effective if there are, you know, if the people who are there are aligned with town strategic goals. So that blueprint should be there. And um, if uh, the financial, there is a financial oversight, the committee should monitor it and the performance throughout the year. So this will ensure adherence to the approved budget. And uh, also the fact that uh, creating a good uh, data structure where you enter everything and the latest uh, cloud um, skills are also very important. And then there's a policy development because they are always changing in this uh, climate of uh, you know political climate right now. The dynamics are always changing. So policy, policy development will be very important. So critical thinking it gets involved. And then another, uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of um, roles that a finance committee is playing. And then the community engagement is another important issue that uh, is very real in a very small community, community, especially where everybody knows each other. And then we have also consultants in there that uh, are using, that are used as advisory. Um, uh, you know, they are used for, uh, I guess, as a, you buy them, their consultancies and so on. But um, but we need to make informed decisions on all these fiscal, uh, fiscal matters. And all of them cannot be, uh, uh, under all of them are very important. We cannot uh, uh, underplay them. Thank you. Um, Stephen. All right, I was able to unmute this time. Um, yeah, so to me, the role or the duties, obligations of the finance committee is to, to steward the finances of the town um, in a way that we can, you know, look to the the future, the the generations that are coming after us. To me, Amherst uh, has always been synonymous with education. I was actually at uh, the Jones Library on Saturday, and um, there were these these young students uh, that they had put they put on a benefit concert to help with the library capital project. And I thought that was like incredible because I definitely was not doing that in middle school or however young these kids were. Um, and so being on the finance committee and making sure that everything that I have benefited from and what we really give to this area to ensure that that, that, that lasts and to improve and build upon what's there to tackle the tough situations currently um, that we have and to, I don't know, to uh, appreciate, you know, those uh, on the finance committee uh, and those other leaders in our community who have uh, worked so hard and tirelessly um, and to just continue that work. And uh, that's, that's my answer. Thank you. Uh, Tom? Thank you. I understand that the finance committee advises the town council on all financial matters. And the, the goal is to contribute in, a, in an advisory mode in accordance uh, with uh, input that is gained through uh, community engagement and in accordance with key values such as DEI, environmental sustainability, and uh, fiscal responsibility. Um, as, uh, as an executive with the Chartered Financial Analyst Institute, I've worked directly on the creation of environmental sustainability standard setting and the promulgation of the ESG standards for the investment field. Um, I know that the Finance Committee concerns itself with budgets, finances, and appropriations concerning Amherst Municipal Government, focusing on priorities in the town budget that include personnel and services, uh, capital investments, real investments, real assets, schools, libraries, everything that the community relies on. I, I would imagine the utilities issues too. And I would just mention in an earlier life, I consulted to municipalities 
on cable television franchise license negotiation. Um, but overall, I would say my understanding is that the finance committee's key job is one of assurance to provide deep analysis and input to inform town council as it prepares uh, to consider and make decisions. Thank you. Uh, so George, I'm handing it over to you. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Um, we're gonna begin this time with Rizwana. And um, the question is, number three, what is your understanding of your role as a non-voting member? Yeah, as a non-voting member, I definitely am not going to be uh, providing expert advice because uh, all of all the people who are already there, they already know that. I can just um, tell them or just suggest my informed opinions because I am a writer and not, uh, I analyze things. I have a blog and I have also now um, cloud and IT I data, I am into that also. So the recommendations based on that will be helpful. And uh, also that will be very technical because in finance, you know, obviously the numbers are very important and how these fundings um, are distributed are important too. So also if the panel agrees because I'm still a non-member, I can con conduct a research because I am good th at that personally, I think I am, and I can analyze it for them if they want that. And it's not as if they want it, I will just use my initiative and help that and also help facilitating discussions because as Stephen also has said, he's very much involved and I'm also involved in the local scene over here and I totally want this to succeed. I want, uh, I really feel hurt if things don't go accordingly and not fairly. So that's the reason I'm, um, you know, going for this. And again, a transparency and inclusivity is very important. And that's the reason I'm getting in there because of the fact that I am in a school district and I love the whole scene over there, the students and the teachers and they're wonderful people. And the transparency, I'm very happy that there's a lot of transparency here. But the fact is that I would prefer a little bit more transparency. Might be it's the protocol, we cannot be too transparent in some matters. Might be then that's the reason I want to be included in this uh, whole you know, committee and how the funding is done. Uh, but personally, I would like to share with you is that because I have been uh, originally, I've been always active and I was once in Kamani's club, I was a president and I did not take care of the finances. So in that, in the end, uh, that taught me a lesson <laughs> that I had somebody else do it and I was not very involved in that. So basically that's my motivation. Thank you. Thank you, Rizwana. Um, Stephen, you're up next. And um, again, the question is, what is your understanding of, the, of your role as a non-voting member? So my understanding of a non-voting member is that I will not be voting. Um, and that uh, I, well, I would intend to, you know, ask questions, um, and try to offer, you know, certain per perspectives that um, I hear from the from the community, um, a certain out outlook, um, just from my my professional work stage in life. Um, let's see. Oh, one of the biggest roles or the things would be really the communication between the town employees who are carrying out the um, majority of uh, like the admin work um, and yeah, being able to team build really between the, the finance committee um, and those that are doing all that technical, technical work. 
because I think once there's like harmony uh, in that, we will really be able to drive forward in, in any direction. Okay, thank you. Thank You're you, Stephen. Uh, Tom, I have you up next. Again, question, what is your understanding of your role as a non-voting member of the committee? Thank you, George. Um, I think I, I understand the role of the non-voting member is to be a thoughtful, uh, candid contributor offer feasible solutions to some very complex challenges uh, and contribute energetically to the design of recommendations that go to the town council. Um, I, I think that I, um, I infer that by bringing in non-voting members from the citizenry, um, you're looking for some additional perspectives and maybe as conduits for perhaps some uh, uh, opinions or input that you that the council itself would not maybe directly get. So I think the one another role is to be is to be uh, an open communicator in the communi in the community. Uh, but I understand it is a non-voting role and meant to contribute advice, uh, analysis, and perspective. Thank you, Tom. Bernie, um, same question. Yeah, I'm pleased to report it is, as a non-voting member, I've been a full participant in uh, finance committee meetings. I have um, equal say with any other, uh, any other member of the committee. My opinions are listened to and valued. Um, I don't always get what I'd like. And sometimes it's helpful not having to vote and not being elected because then my constituency is whomever I run into in the stop shop. Uh, or, you know, or downtown or somewhere else. I, I, I'm not elected, so I have a degree of freedom in terms of expressing myself, and uh, I can be as subtle as a train wreck, uh, but people haven't kicked me out yet. So uh, uh, we've done, uh, the non-voting members are fully part of the process. We write reports, we do research as, uh, as requested by the, uh, by the members of the committee. Um, other members of the committee, our position on any issue is recorded. Uh, it doesn't count as a vote, but it's recorded as a support or a pose. Uh, so it's it's really pretty uh, a pretty interesting position to be in. And I've certainly appreciated my time doing that. Thank you. Rickett? Thank you. I think we are on to question number four, which is, tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with a group, particularly where opinions were in conflict or the decision was controversial. And I think this begins with Stephen. I'm it's taking me a while to come up with one because I tend to stick to myself. So the conflict uh easily avoidable. Um but in, it's hard to uh come up with a, a singular example, but uh I guess I can describe like my method of how I approach it when it does occur. Um so I think really the key is uh listening. Um, being able to listen uh, and not always understand, um, you know, because there's a lot of things that go on uh, in uh, communication, but just really the putting the effort into to listening, understanding where whoever um, is coming from, uh, trying to understand that that discourse and coming to a consensus. Um, and I think that just takes like, you know, patience. You have to devoid yourself of, of some pride um, and just be willing to, to, to be educated and to, to also teach in a, in a way that will benefit uh, everybody. Thank you. You kind of thrilled at the end, but I think you, you finished. Thank you. Tom Porter. So yeah, I, that was finished. Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, okay, I um, I have an experience to share with you that I think is a good story about a high stakes assignment. Um, but I'll amend it. Um, early in my career at 28, I was put in a room with seven people who didn't really know each other. And some of them didn't much like each other, but we were working for a company that was under a great deal of pressure financially, possibly going out of business. And we were ordered to come up with a brilliant idea to help the company that was, uh, so that was the challenge, help the company that was trying to, struggling to break even. And, and uh, you know, kind of like the 12 Angry Men film, uh, although we were both women and men, it was a difficult process of brainstorming and persuasion. Um, the company was Discovery Channel and the idea we came out with was Shark Week. And it's kind of a fun story, but I'm, I, I thought it was a good story yesterday when I was preparing for this. I'm not sure how relatable it is for the town council at all, but it's but there were some great lessons in it. But I'm going to tell you something happened to me today that uh, so I'm going to replace it with a more relatable anecdote. I spent 90 minutes at uh, at a one o'clock today working on long range financial planning. Uh, I'm the chair of the finance committee, as I mentioned, for the JCA, and I met with the president, the treasurer, and the executive director. Uh, we are the four people entrusted with collectively helping to guide the organization to maintain its financial health. And despite its age at 54 years uh, old, that this is an organization that does not have what I consider to be a, an adequate long range financial plan. It, that's as solid as I would want it to be. We don't agree, the four of us on tactics yet, but by reviewing our uh, guiding principles and values, Recapping our ultimate long-term goal, we are now confirmed in agreement on key elements of that work after today's session. For instance, we have a different sense of risk tolerance among the four of us, but by being candid with uh, each other and admitting what we were uncomfortable with, we ultimately were able to lock arms and move forward. Um, I'll tell you about two points on which there was initial disagreement. Um, I, I am the one who was most committed to the longest range plan. We're going from having a one year operating budget to a much longer and much more uh, expansive planning horizon. Uh, and uh, I'm not the only one, but I'm uh, uh, leaning on the side of those who are pressing for greatest openness and input and transparency, as opposed to those who are making a case for a more closed process we were able to get into a very productive collaborative mindset and overcome uh, log jams and, and we're on a good course. I understand that the town council finance committee is five council members and three non-voting residents. We all have skin in the game. We all have a vested interest in getting things right for Amherst. So no doubt there will be different points of view. My view is that respectful listening and openness to new ideas are crucial and winning principles that under underpin a process of fruitful collaboration. So that's that's my view of it. Thank you. Ben? I think the question is for Bernie. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, um, the the experience. I'm, I'm spacing out here. I'm, I apologize. Um, I was just chuckling over the Shark Week actually because I was going to say that we just had a we just went over a uh, uh, we we just spent a little over two hours deliberating on the uh, the variations in the high school athletic field renovation, and I think the uh, the folks from the schools and the designer thought it would be more probably closer to Shark Tank than Shark Week. Uh, but that's a good example. I mean, all, all of my work that I've done has been through groups. Very seldom have I been able to just simply make a decision. I've either been working with an elected board, uh, with the elected board who's my employer, uh, with a interdisciplinary team around human services, or um, this more recent, uh, this, this, uh, uh, meeting we had, uh, the finance committee had just very recently on the athletic fields, where we managed to have, we managed to start out with some significant disagreements and come to a consensus process, make some votes and some recommendations to the um, to the council that I hope the council will 
they'll hear them on Monday. I hope they'll they'll find them uh, reasonable and meaningful and, and, and as a path forward. But I, I like to say that reasonable people disagree reasonably. And that just because someone doesn't hold the same idea that you do doesn't mean that that idea is that valid and deserves consideration. And I think uh, we've been able to work through this process. And I've, I've seen that happen on the Finance Committee. Uh, it's actually been a fairly amicable group. Um, we're disputatious at times, but friendly. Thank you. Rizwana? Yeah, hi. I am actually very different from Bernie because I have been not working uh, the, the this financial aspect is very power oriented is in, in my culture is very hard to get to it but uh, fortunately um, uh, I was able to uh, because of my initiative I started programs um, that were related more into uh, social welfare and we have committees that collect money for the poor people who are, you know, uh, uh, socioeconomically, they are having issues, you know, the children are on streets and drugs and not in a good education. So I went into that committee and I knew them because of, as I said that I can, um, I was an advocate and I am able to look at them and measure them and judge them that what's going on. So I can do that. And I changed the trajectory of those funding. Basically, they were, there's a cycle of, um, that is called, um, you know, the, the cycle that keeps on going. Uh, you're paying, uh, you, you, you're creating that deficiency and reinforcing it in the society. So over there, I was able to turn that around. And there was a Obviously, there's a lot of opposition because those people were uh, more, um, they were been more experienced and they've been there for a long time. And I was a newcomer and outsider uh, in a way, semi outsider, but I was able to change the whole system and it really helped the community that was inner city community. And that, that left an impression because I started a enrichment program that is still practiced over here, you know, uh, showing them historical activities through writing and going to the museums and so on. There was a whole community behind it. So it was a big, very successful endeavor that I created. And it was all because of the fact I was actively listening to those people, you know, who were very unhappy and they were there was some kind of, a, you know, a vengeance there in their tone that they felt that they were being mistreated because they were not, the, the resources weren't being shared with them. So I, through my active listening and empathy, I was able to do that. And it, uh, and, and it's been now a few years, but they still remember that and their mindset changed the people. And, and there was, it was very positive. And I saw the people who had resources, they just couldn't uh, fathom why why I was doing that. So the finances went to the right place in, in, a, in a good manner because there was accountability and transparency afterwards, after my endeavor. So I'm very really happy with that. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next question, which we will start with Stephen, is please describe the considerations and objectives you'll use for considering financial matters and the budget when making recommendations to the council. Let me say it stated again. Please describe the considerations and objectives you'll use for considering financial matters and the budget when making recommendations to the council. And we begin with Stephen. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I will listen to those that are working in the, in the finance division. I will listen to those in the community. 
our business owners, our homeowners, our renters, our students, our seniors, our professionals, our athletes, our student, everybody. Um, that's um, that's how I get my 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 data by uh, talking to the people, seeing what is uh, important to them, what financial concerns they have uh, in regards to the town, um, and yeah, that's that's my answer. Okay. Uh, and we then go to Tom. Thanks, Lynn. Um, I would say in addition to those guiding values that were shared with us, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, environmental sustainability, and fiscal responsibility, uh, I'd be uh, concerned with um, long-term sustainability. Uh, is, is it affordable now? Is it sustainable in the future? Where's the money coming from? How confident can we be? Uh, we know that we can't necessarily eliminate risk, but we can try to understand it and weigh it, and in, in some cases, uh, reduce it. Um, so those would be some of the considerations I would bring to what I understand is primarily a financial analysis process, um, but needs to be sensitive to, to these elements. In addition to fiscal solvency, I would be concerned with these objectives with promoting excellence and efficiency in the way that the town conducts its business and uh, to prioritize that which fortifies Amherst's unique culture and appeal as a welcoming community where programs and uh, uh, services are well supported and where businesses can thrive, uh, where neighbors engage with the town and where families can have great opportunity. Uh, Bernie. Well, everybody wants things done faster, better, cheaper, but that's not always possible. Um, I, I take a more practical approach to this is, is the, what's in front of us, uh, practical, feasible, desirable, uh, from the standpoint of improving the town services, improving the town overall, uh, benefiting, um, uh, Many, if not most, of the town citizens, um, the old uh, uh, Pareto principle, um, is it sustainable? And not sustainable as a buzzword, which we all hear, but where's the money coming from? Is the money going to be there? Are you looking to use uh, free cash or, or stabilization, which are essentially one-time only funds, to do something that needs to be repeated year after year after year? Uh, how does this all work? How does this all fit? Um, I spent 28 years working in human services and a good chunk of that time was making financial decisions that impacted people directly. Uh, folks were looking for, persons were looking for service, for, persons with disabilities were looking for services. And with that came some aching decisions about who got what and how that, who got how much. And I think that still informs the kind of approach I take on the finance committee um, is, is who's this going to benefit? Um, is this going to really be helpful? Uh, is this something that we can afford because you don't want to put people at risk by starting something that you can't complete? Um, and, you know, because the town doesn't exist in a vacuum, um, you have to take into account state and federal requirements, uh, uh, statutes, uh, which are sometimes dry and dusty and disconnected from people. Uh, and you also have to think about certain proposals when they come up, how is it going to impact the town's bond rating? Or um, or what you're planning on doing, is it going to survive and what it? Uh, those are some practical considerations that come in. And uh, Rizwana. Thank you, Lynn. Um, yeah, I believe that um, the financial committee is uh, right now in the in the town of Amherst is really doing good in the respect uh, you know like uh, I don't know how many stars I can give but the fact is the whole engagement and outreach is exceptional I have to say that because all the programs they have outside and the commons and all that that is really a uh, 
you know, uh, uh, people puller. They they crowds. They come for that, and it helps the businesses also. So that becomes uh, one good thing. And again, I believe if there is a, there is a diversity, equity is very important. DEI values th these are very important. And when if we create a nice blueprint, a, a plan where uh, you know exactly this is where we need help, I'm sure there will be uh, grants and money that will be coming. But we need to have a proper uh, plan and we need to be listening to what's going on. So I think that is very important. Sometimes we miss that, the, the listening part. Uh, and uh, and then empathy, obviously people are empathetic to things, but that might not be enough if we are not um, uh, giving them the feedback also and letting them know that this will and, and can happen. We just don't give up. So when, uh, we, when we do the outreach and we meet people and that is happening here, the, the you know the town angela and pam they are doing so such a great job of bringing people together and creating these nice events you know so when we do that we need to keep ourselves open to analyzing the feedback also there should be some kind of feedback that will give us the uh, the pathway as to how we create that blueprint where we can get more grants and financially because Honestly, I think that in, there's there's no secret there. There are that many taxpayers, and the, the basic is the, still the same. So we have to bring something on the top, and we have to highlight that so we can get that in also. And uh, be, um, that's basically my opinion. And I am very positive that we can do much better and help uh, equitably everybody. Hey, I think I'm ready to have this go on to George. Thank you, Lynn. Um, Tom, uh, if I have my order right, and at this point, I'm even I'm getting confused, but I believe Tom is up next. No, Stephen uh, is up it next. It is Stephen? All right. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you both. Thank you. Someone. I have oh. the paper everywhere here. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Breke, did you have? Yes. So I, I will apologize. I actually was supposed to have Rizwana. And so we've had Stephen twice. Oh, okay. Yes. So. so we could either go back to Rizwana or we start with Tom, as the case may be. Okay. Why don't we start with Tom? And then we'll go Tom, Bernie, Rizwana, and Stephen. Okay. Thank you. That's that's fine. I just want to make sure you're not skipping Stephen, who maybe was to come up next. I'm happy to go, but I got one. Stephen came up first oh. this last time. Yes. And he yeah, came yeah. up first the time before. So <laughs> I think we should put Tom on the hot seat. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Tom, this is question number six. And mm -hmm. um, it's what is your approach to incorporating public input into your decision making? Uh, I like this. I know. Um, We've talked about outreach and, and input. It's I understand the whole, the committee holds public hearings, for instance, on the budget. I've attended those this year. Uh, it's very important to understand public sentiment. Uh, we like to say we're the town where the, only the H is silent, and well, we need to allow everyone to listen, to understand, and to feel heard. Uh, and by everybody, you know, that's the majority and, and the marginalized, the most passionate uh, and the most shy who are, are often just as passionate. Uh, we should make the process inviting and comprehensible uh, and, and be transparent uh, in order to do that. Thank you, Tom. Bernie, the same question. Sure. I uh, I found that by being in the finance committee, it invites people to talk to you about town finances, regardless of where you are uh, and whether the person lives in Amherst or not. Uh, you, you, uh, you, you, you get uh, consulted frequently, uh, and that's fine. It's, uh, those informal discussions are probably um, some of the more valuable interactions that I have because 
people are not on camera. They're not being recorded. They're, they're, they don't, there's no audience. They can be frank. Um, and if they don't understand something, uh, you can engage in dialogue, which uh, the, the problem that I have with the, uh, you know, public uh, uh, access piece of, of any meeting is it's one way. And you can't get you can't engage in dialogue, and you can't say you know it's a good idea. We need to pursue it, or uh, wait a second. You know, there's a there's an error here that um, or information that you're lacking that I think you need to know. Um, I pay attention to what uh, opinions are expressed in the media. Uh, you know, whether it's a paper or blogs or um, Facebook or uh, next door neighbors or or whatever uh, electronic stuff comes past me. Um, I also pay attention to what people say in those public comment sessions. Uh, um, and again, regret that you're not able to in engage in dialogue, all that would probably take over the entire meeting. Um, and I also try to pay attention to what's happening, um, not just in Amherst, but outside of Amherst and outside of, uh, outside of the state uh, in terms of uh, uh, municipalities and people's ideas and who's trying what and wonder if that will work back here in Massachusetts, because something that seems fantastic in Colorado may not translate well under the Mass General Laws. To try and find as much of this, uh, it, it, as much information as you can in both formal and informal ways. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, Rizwana, what would be your approach yeah, to I, uh... Yeah, community, basically, uh, humans, we have this tendency, we create patterns, and I go with them. And analyzing is very important to be, me, because otherwise, I get lost also. So uh, the feedback received from the community uh, will ident identify the common themes and the patterns and the priorities and the areas of con consensus. And they are very, uh, they've been there the whole time. It's just that Sometimes uh, some little bit of things are changing, but because of the pandemic, more things change rapidly, but otherwise things were always the same, but we need to nudge them because of the fact there's so much of social media going on. We can't, we do not have time to uh, figure out and you know who, who's saying what. So we have to make sure that we are able to analyze everything in um, numbers because it's finance uh, and so we can help and make it uh, you know uh, be able to that will help us to make an informed decision and it, that'll ensure uh, that public input is also given to us um, because of the fact we don't know where the who is coming with which background and what is who is influencing whom so there's so much politics going on so uh, I guess uh, main thing is we have to have reliable feedback and uh, we should uh, be very professional about it. That is the important part. And transparency again is an issue because I felt really bad because uh, of the situation uh, because we didn't know things were happening and others knew you know, the newspapers. So... Uh, and a transparency and communication will be good only if we are able to analyze properly. Thank you. Stephen. All right, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Excellent. Um, so I think that through my, my current work, um, and branching out uh, and continuing to work in um, finance, municipal finance, um, with new communities. Um, I have a pretty, my, my perspective is uh, expanding. Um, and I, I think that, you know, working with multiple finance teams um, and having to learn, you know, different people's schedules, um, personalities. Um, I know I'm not talking much numbers, even though that's a majority of what my work actually is, um, is, uh, you know, crunching the, the numbers um, for property values. 
Um, but a lot of it is actually, you know, people work and finding out how to have everything uh, run, run smoothly. Um, and I think that that uh, that skill is um, very translatable and useful um, in one that I would put to use in gathering data from the the residents of Amherst in my in my community. And um, again, I guess it just comes back to to being able to 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 listen to and seeing the the needs of the town um and to have a, a commitment to to fulfilling them um and i just i know this isn't part of the the question but just like this whole experience has been wonderful for, for me like i don't know if i would have met any of you um typically with like my my current like schedule and i'm very encouraged and excited to see that um there our town has people that are going to spend their thursday nights discussing this um and so yeah i don't even know where i went went with that but that that was my my answer thank you Stephen. we always we always like praise um <laughs> i'm i'm done um it goes back to flipping yeah, thank you question seven what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the finance committee this would be a question beginning with Bernie. Okay, well, um, I mean, I have a record. I have a demonstrated record of participating, being open in my opinions, careful how I approach topics. Um, I don't have a parking lot agenda. I don't bring that into the meeting. I think that's uh, uh, always troublesome. Uh, I don't see myself as an advocate for any particular cause or position, but as an advocate for the town. Um, you you wanna do what's best for the most people in Amherst. You want is to maximize benefits to folks. Uh, since I've been around for a while, I tend to lean on my experience. And because issues tend to be variations on a theme, I don't get um, as rattled uh, and I don't see it as many events as unique as, as some others might. Um, that's, I think that's about it for me. I, I you folks know who I, you know, you, you can look at the tape. Um, I really do appreciate this opportunity uh, and I appreciate everybody who's applied. And I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's been a really interesting, uh, an interesting evening. So thank you. Thank you. Next is Rizwana. Okay, I will actually say thank you to all of you on Thursday evening coming out and interviewing us and, and I appreciate that. And uh, I would just say that my I like expediency and I bring, because of that, I am able to um, process things more quickly and, and the reason being I, identify patterns and also the, that helps me make informed uh, financial decisions and any decision as per se. And my commitment to advocacy and uh, then um, research, I have to have researched uh, um, decisions. And also attention to details helps me. And because of the fact I am in technology and I'm working towards my goals in cloud and all that. So that'll help streamline the process for everyone because I am a hard worker and I I really am more interested in the process than the end. End is always important. The process makes me happy also. So basically that's what um, I would uh, sit and, you know contribute. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen? Um, yes. Um, lately, I've had the Midas touch. So trying to ride that wave as long as possible. 
um, <laughs> but I I also I do have a lot of passion and commitment um, to 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 the town. Um, there's just so many relationships uh, that I that I formed, um, and as I've gotten older, I'm forming like new ones and just keep coming in contact with with wonderful people. And I guess the best way that I can show my appreciation for them is to like give whatever energy I have to be able to to learn um, and to to help. So uh, I guess that's that's what would make me a good candidate that I, I don't give up. Um, and yeah, I have a high, high, high desire uh, and capacity to to help the town. Thank you. Last but not least would be Tom. Thank you. Um, what else would make me a strong candidate? Well, I, I would hope that the council would see me as a positive addition to the work and the discussions that are underway to fortify Amherst's future. I, I have technical skills, as I've mentioned, in financial planning, management, reporting, and presentation. And uh, I have skills in uh, professional training of professionals on uh, financial and ethics uh, concerns. I've either produced or executed or else been in the position to review and assess over 400 business plans in my career. And I actually enjoy that. And I even enjoy auditing. So I guess I'm, I guess I'm a nerd. Um, I, I love my hometown. I moved here in 1962 as a little boy, and after a career away, uh, my wife and I moved our family back home in uh, 2005. Uh, all four of our kids believe that the childhood that they had here in Amherst um, before they went out into the world was the best time of their lives. And I think they're right. And I want that same opportunity for everybody else who comes to our town. Um, I really thank the council members for your consideration tonight. And uh, Bernie, Rizwana, and Stephen, I haven't met any of you. I'm really kind of looking forward to running into you uptown. Uh, I'd love to get to know you better. And I thank you everybody for your time tonight. Thank you. Um, so the following question is quite easy. It's yes or no, or you might want to give us an explanation. So currently the finance committee meets twice a month during the year, but when budget season begins at the end of April, beginning of May, meetings become more frequent, twice a month, twice a week, twice a week for the whole month of May. Can you confirm that you have the time to commit to this meeting schedule? And we're going to begin with Bernie. I can confirm that, and yes, and I have. Okay. Um, Rizwana. Yes. Uh, Stephen. Yes. And Tom. No, you don't really want three minutes from me on this one. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, Councilor Ette, I'm turning it back over to you as the vice chair of this committee. Yeah, thank you. Um, I really want to appreciate everyone who was able to make it for um, the interviews and thank you for your thoughtful preparation and the answers that you gave to the questions. We won't have any deliberation this evening. I think we will end up doing that at our next meeting, which should be next week. Um, and from that meeting, we'll be able to um, come to a decision on the candidates who will be joining the committee. So just, um, we will be meeting, uh, today is what, the 13th? So we're 13th. meeting on the 20th. The 20th, yes. At that point, we will select who we're going to recommend to the council. And those names will be brought forth to the council on the 24th of June. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Thanks to all of you for taking the time to meet with us.
Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye. Good night. Do you want a motion to adjourn, Councilor yes, Etchen? I would like a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I will second. second that motion. Okay, so we'll take a vote. There's no discussion. We're just going to go right to a vote. Normally, we have a discussion about adjourning. I, I just want to say I thought that, that the vice chair did a great job, and uh, so I just want to express my appreciation that I found myself at times moving five pieces of paper and one timer, and I'm, I guess I'm getting too old for this. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much at. Uh, Preke for doing this and Councilor Ate. Excuse so me. So I vote yes. Sorry. I vote yes. Okay. And I vote yes as well. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank and you. Thank, thank you, Athena. As always. Thank you. Good night.